I'm just putting my hands off here very lightly and the vehicle does all the land assist for me on the steering adjustment. And just like that, the vehicle sees the land on the right and then take the spot just like that. Now we are approaching the left lane, exit, there we go, automatic indicate, change the left lane marking. Hi guys, this is Jerry, welcome to the channel. Today is a quick video on the Tesla Model Y. This is the new Model Y that's available in the New Zealand right-hand drive market. At the moment, the FSD is not fully available just yet. In the future, we're going to test drive the FSD whenever we have a chance. But anyway, today I want to show you the standard cruise control along with the auto steer. That means it's got the enhanced autopilot feature enabled on this vehicle. I'll go through the basics of the cruise control available on the Tesla Model Y. Along with that, I will also show you some cool features that the vehicle will automatically turn lines and things like that will automatically get off the motorway as well. If you find my video helpful, the best way to support the channel is to subscribe and like. Now, let's get started. All right, before we get started, just under the vehicle settings and just under the autopilot, you are able to change between traffic aware cruise control or auto steer. Navigates on autopilot, that's the same thing. There will be more tutorial over here. Do remember, you can only change these settings while the vehicle stays still and park. You can also do speed limit on the set speed or current speed. That means when you push down the cruise control function, it will automatically set your speed to cruise control, to speed limit or to current speed. You can do fixed offsite, that means zero kilometers to the speed limit or plus or minus or you can do percentage as well. You can do speed limit warning display, you can do speed limit relative or absolute, whatever you want to discuss. You can do offset as well, plus or minus. Now there are some additional settings for the forward collision systems. That's pretty much it. We don't want to talk about that. Customize navigate on autopilot. That means first thing you can enable at the start of every trip. Over here, you can also do speed based land changes. Mild means if the front vehicle drives way too slow, less than the um, cruise control or your speed limiter speed, uh, it's going to change the lens either mildly or averagely or mad max. Mad max can be a little bit crazy on the motorway, can be, can be a little bit hectic, but whatever you want, you can do that. You can also disable that. That means the car is not going to ultimately change the lens unless it's approaching the motorway. Next, exit passing lens. That just means in New Zealand, the right lane on the motorway is considered to be the passing lens. And if you click yes, that means when the vehicle knows you're going to drive on this motorway for quite some time, it's not going to stay on the passing lane all the time. It just automatically shifts back to the center lane or the left lane. So someone else can, do the, can use the passing lane freely. Next one, require line change confirmation. If you click yes, every single time if you use the indicator or every single time the vehicle is doing the navigation to the land markings, it's gonna let you to confirm that land change. So you have to hold your steering or turn left and right, do a little bit more corrections. Uh, if you click yes, that means more confirmation. No, that means less confirmation, but still, it would still need your confirmation and here and there. Land change notification, so if there are some if issues or anything with the land change, it's gonna give you chime, it's gonna give you vibrate or both or off, whatever you prefer. So that's the settings for the navigator on autopilot, uh, which is better again. So this is based on the current version. In the future, it's gonna be upgraded. It's gonna be down of the system update. Anyway, let's get started. All right, now we're on motorway. It's going to show you these 100 kilometers for the speed limit over here. It's going to also show you 100 max in a gray marking. The gray marking means it's ready to go on cruise control whenever you are ready. Because we have set the cruise control to set on a speed limit, that means I will just need to push this down, single click. It's going to start on cruise control at 100. If you want to change your speed on the cruise control, swipe up and down, allow you to change the speed. If you do it slowly, it's gonna go one and two and three. And again, decreasing by one by one as well. If you do it really fast, like this, it's going to plus to five. Do a large sort of swipe down or quick swipe down. It's going to 100, quick swipe down, 95, 90, just like that. So that's how to change your cruise control speed using this adjustment. 
Again, on the settings, you are able to change that to current speed to set to start or speed limit to set up. And while you're on the motorway, you can also change the distance between you and the front vehicle. Click left and right, allow you to change the distance. You can do up to seven as the longest distance or up to two for the shortest distance. Right now, we are on three, as we can see. The vehicle will then automatically balance your cruise control speed against the front vehicle. Along with that, we talked about auto steer, you're able to engage that over here. So press over here, that means the auto steer on navigation has been started. Instead of the two markings, I'll click this to disengage. You can see standard cruise control, two markings on the side, that means the vehicle will hold the steering, uh, give the balance on the steering and things. If you press over here, and then the blue markings is going to be focused in the center. So that means the vehicle will see the front car and then change the balance. Along with that, it will also do some additional things like navigate on um, auto steer. If we change the auto steer land change to be aggressive, at this time, if the front vehicle is only driving 80 something, much lower than our set speed, which is 100, the car will just automatically change to right lane, left lane, trying to go over passing this slower traffic. But because we've done mild this time, it's not going to do that. It's just following the front traffic. Uh, pretty easy, pretty simple. All right now we are on a slow traffic on the motorway. The vehicle will automatically detect the front vehicle, drive it slow as we can, and then do other things, adjustments on the steering and all that things. So it's a pretty simple task to drive in a daily traffic. When the vehicle comes to a complete stop, you relaunch the cruise control again. Uh, you don't need to do anything. The car just automatically goes following the front traffic. It does that job really, really nicely. Uh, only occasionally you find that the start acceleration is a little bit too aggressive. When the vehicle or truck in front of us come to a complete stop, if we do that surge, uh, it may do a little bit harsh braking here and there, but it's all controlled quite well if in the sort of moving traffic, there's no issue at all. Although it is, it is absolutely not recommended, but I've done a safe test. I've still watched the road with my hands around it, but you can let go the steering um, up to about 40 seconds or so before the vehicle tells you off about you need to control the steering, you need to give the steering a small shake, small adjustment, um, so it's not going to disengage straight away and things. The vehicle also give you some strikes if you're not watching the road, if you just completely fall asleep or anything like that. Eventually, you will not be able to use the cruise control on this particular journey and then up to five times or something like that, it will disengage the auto steer uh, for this vehicle. So that's the safe measurement for the vehicle to not allowing you to fall asleep or completely let the vehicle drive itself since it's not safe to do so. Now, if the motorway is very clear, you can obviously change your lens uh, with the indicator the vehicle ultimately goes to the lens once it's all cleared. But if there's traffic and if you do want to change the lens, the vehicle can behave just a little bit timid uh, according to the traffic and things. If you have someone at your blind spot, if you do the indicator, it's going to show over here that it's going to wait for the vehicle to clear or for the land to clear before it merges or something like that. I wouldn't really recommend using it at a slow traffic like this when it's so busy. And do remember, when you change the lens, sometimes the vehicle will ask for your confirmation to tilt the steering just a little bit on the left or a little bit on the right. Remember, you can only do a very small adjustment. If you do heavy adjustments on the steering, then it will just disengage the auto steer right away. So that you have to control that. It's not going to be easy to start, but once you get used to it, it's pretty easy. Now, while the auto steer is doing its job on the Auckland Harbour Bridge, uh, to cancel the cruise control, you can push this down to quickly cancel it, or just manually press the brake to cancel the cruise control at any time. If you do want to re-engage, just push it down again, that will re-engage the cruise control. Uh, while you're on cruise control, you can also do accelerator to just get it override, and then release the accelerator, that will pull you back to the cruise control speed again. 
So yeah, these are all possible while you're doing cruise control functions. The cool thing about the Tesla's cruise control is because it shows the front side line vehicles along with that, it can also detect the vehicle in front of you is doing indicators. The vehicle cuts in front of us, then the vehicle actually brakes a little bit faster or reacts to that um, land cut a lot faster than some other vehicles. It means it's not going to go through a very harsh braking phase when someone cuts in front of us. So that's actually really good by the Tesla. Again, I'm not really turning the corners over here. The vehicle itself is doing all the controls, although I'm putting my hands on the steering, giving a little bit force to let the vehicle know that I'm here. But look at the adjustments over here. It's a very, it's very good in terms of um, its balancing around the curves. Right, since this car in front of us is just simply too slow, we're going to do a land change over here. Just like that, the vehicle sees the land on the right and then take the spot just like that. And once we pass this vehicle, we can also turn the left lane. Even if you haven't passed this vehicle, you can also take, take the left just like that. Let the vehicle ask me to do that. And then we are shifting back to the left. I did not indicate, by the way, the vehicle does have that option, says uh, we're not driving on the passing lane, so once we pass that vehicle and Tesla knows, and then that's where it automatically indicates to take us back into the driving lane instead of the right passing lane. You can absolutely disable that feature if you want to, but it's probably good if you let someone pass on your right. And this is another very large curve over here again. I'm just putting my hands off here very lightly and the vehicle does all the land assist for me on the steering adjustment. And it goes to the right again. I think the vehicle wants to get close to the passing lane but not really to, towards the full passing lane. Because it kind of knows we are going to go 1.2 meters just on the right so it doesn't want to stay on the very far end which is um, understandable. Again, we are still under the auto steer, navigate and auto steer as well. That's why the vehicle does all those things, like itself doing the land change. And on the camera, it probably looks like I'm turning the steering, but I'm not. I'm not doing anything to the steering. I'm just softly place my hands on top of it, uh, just in case something happens, so I can take control immediately. But at the same time, the vehicle does all the balancing, does all the small corrections for me. All right, now we are approaching the motorway exit, which is about two kilometers away. You can see this message popped up, upcoming land change. If you do not want to do that, you can just click it to cancel. But then after a few seconds again, it will just come up again as it's a reminder that the vehicle will start doing the land change before we need to take off the exit to get us on the left lane. And there we go, that message came up again. So you do not need to do anything, but again, hold your steering, uh, make sure you have it under the control. And after some seconds, the vehicle start doing the left turn for us to go into the left lane. There we go, left lane engaged. They ask us to just hold the steering. So you can see it changed to the left lane for us. And it focus on the cars again. Again, if you have anyone behind you on your left or on your right, when you do the indicator when the vehicle changes the lane, that's going to skip that car, either go past by the car or slow um, down to let that car pass. Now we are approaching the left lane, exit, there we go, automatically indicate, change the left lane marking. And we haven't finished just yet because we are going to go another exit just after this one. This is the tricky part, and I think this car has done that really, really well. We're going to see that. So this is the exit we are going to take. And then after just about 200 meters, we are going to take a left again. You can also see the vehicle knows we are approaching to a very strong curve over here. It ultimately changes the cruise control to 80 kilometers 
so that we are slowing down around this curve 70 max and over here we are going to take the left lane just like that I did not indicate the vehicle ultimately changed the left lane for us and now we are going back so after 100 meters they never get all autopilot will be ended as the vehicle now goes back to the standard um, like cruise control because we are not really on the full motorway anymore again at the moment it is still on better so it's not a full version just yet they are still doing testing and things like that i think some of the exits may not be available under the auto steer on navigate um, it really depends on how the vehicle drives and things so you do need to watch out um, before the vehicle engage and disengage right now the vehicle knows our next so the part for this trip does not have the auto steer available under navigation that means it's just going to drive on the uh, standard cruise control or standard auto steer not under navigation anymore so now as we're approaching to our destination let's quickly talk about the good things about auto steer and just standard cruise control for the tesla vehicles it's very easy to set up and very easy to control the speed and things and um, the land cap or the auto steer works so well now this land change i did not do anything i just indicate the vehicle changed the land marking just like that um, sometimes it may feel a little bit timid here and there um, when it's like there's a lot of traffic around you but it's also understandable the vehicle just need to be cautious around certain corners and things um, along with that the navigate on auto steer is really cool um, it's absolutely brilliant it's more like a party trick probably for your family but at the same time it works for me i've tried many exits uh, along the drive it does work really really well for me so it's actually something i've been using these few days just to give it a test just to give it a run so it's actually really nice so in my opinion tesla has one of the best if not the best cruise control or driving assistance packages available in the new zealand market it's so much advanced compared to any other competitors with the same price bracket at the same time the land cap assistance or the land steering auto steer is the best i've ex experienced on any other vehicles again so far it takes so much stress off you when you are traveling on the motorway or in busy traffic um, it is just simply brilliant to use so that's the end of this video if you enjoyed the content please subscribe and like that's the best way to support the channel as always i will see you in the next video thank you very much